Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the Apple Watch Series 7. This has been my main Apple Watch since the day it released, which was just over six months or so ago. So I wanted to talk about how it's held up, durability, any issues I've had, and more. Now the first thing is overall use. I use the Apple Watch mostly as just a watch, so I'm not using this mainly as a fitness or health device, I'm using it more as a watch and communication device. So as you can see the layout on my display, I have messages in the upper left, then in the middle I have the Lumi app, and this is Infograph Modular on the display here. So Infograph Modular with the complication Lumi or app Lumi in the middle that tells me when golden hour is or the best time to sort of take photos and video. Then in the bottom left I have temperature, compass in the middle and music on the right. The things that I use the most with this. Now I don't use it for workouts too much. I do use it from time to time, maybe to take a walk or something along those lines. And I'll probably use it more this year and very soon than I ever have. But as far as this goes, this is more how I use it. It's just basically a nice watch with communication ability. Now, as far as the overall durability of this device, well, Apple says they've increased durability this year. Now, this is the stainless steel model. You can see here the actual sensors are turned on since it's trying to measure my my heart rate, but you'll see here it's a series seven 45 millimeter stainless steel version. And the reason I opt for the stainless steel and last year, the titanium version is that it comes with this sapphire crystal display. Now others have measured the display and said that maybe it's not a hundred percent sapphire or it's a lower grade, but either way it's a hundred percent provided me a scratch free experience. So I have no scratches on the display. So if I shut the display off, you can't see a single scratch. And just last week, I actually bumped it into bricks and concrete and I don't have a single scratch on it. I've had that problem in the past with the aluminum or aluminum one that has glass on it and it actually scratched really badly. So that's an advantage if you don't want to put a screen protector. And one of the reasons I opt for the more expensive version just for that sapphire crystal. The overall frame being stainless steel is actually held up pretty well. It does show quite a few fingerprints though. If we rotate it around here, you can see any fingerprints it might have, and it does pick up fingerprints just like the stainless steel iPhones do. But overall, it's actually pretty scratch free. I haven't had any issues there. And then you could polish it out if you needed to. I'm also using a nomad stainless steel band that sort of matches it. So that's something I've been using for a long time. I really like their products and they were nice enough to send this along quite some time ago. So that'll be linked in the description, but it's not a sponsored video or an advertisement for them. It's just something that I like and that I use regularly. Now, as far as durability, like I said, it's quite good, no issues there. And if you have the aluminum version, again, as long as you're careful with it, I really wouldn't expect any issues as far as that goes. Now with the larger display this year, we get a couple extra features. So basically we have a larger display, which actually is much nicer than it sounded to me at first. It's easier to see everything, but also provides more information on the screen or display in a larger format and then allows for a couple extra things. So you also get this always on display that's up to 70% brighter. However, that's never really mattered to me as you tilt the display down. So maybe we tilt it away from the screen. It goes into a slower, maybe 10 Hertz mode or so there. You can see it there and saves power, but it's up to 70% brighter. But when the watch is tilted away from me, I'm not looking at it. So it doesn't really matter to me. If I had it horizontally on my wrist, maybe laying on a table, that might be a little nicer, but that's something that doesn't really matter to me. And it isn't a reason to switch from maybe a series six to a series seven. However, you do get a couple extra features with the larger display. So if we go into things like the calculator here, so we'll go up to calculator. Let's go back calculator. We have a full size calculator here that makes it really easy to use because the display is larger. We also get a full size keyboard, which is really nice. So if we go into messages, in messages, if I tap on messages, I can say, hi, how are you today? Just by swiping and just go, hi, how are you today? Now it's not a hundred percent accurate. And I find I have this issue a lot so we can back up and then try it again. I find it much easier just to use the microphone and use voice dictation to say this. So we can do the same sort of thing here. Hi, how are you today? And it's much easier to do that 
and it's very accurate. So I typically don't really use the keyboard much, but it's nice to have that option with the series seven, since you have that larger display. Now, one thing that was really useful to many of us late last year is Apple added the ability to unlock your iPhone. If it has face ID using your watch to bio authenticate that it's you. And if you're wearing a mask, so it would make it a lot easier to unlock. And then later they added the feature directly into the phone itself. If you have an iPhone 12 or newer. So if you have an older iPhone, older than an iPhone 12, which is only a few years old at this point, you can still use the Apple watch to help unlock it and make your life a little easier if you're wearing a mask. So this is something, if you don't have an Apple watch and you have maybe an iPhone 10, I would recommend it just to more easily unlock your phone if you're wearing a mask. So that's something that's been very helpful that Apple added later on and has been helpful to many people and is still there again, if you have one of the maybe devices older than an iPhone 12. Now this year we did not really get a processor update, so we didn't really see too much of a change there. So if we go into different apps, they're nice and fast. As you saw the calculator here, maybe we go into the camera remote, it will trigger the camera on the phone. It loads pretty quickly and also things like compass or any app that you're going into, even if you don't go into it too often, it seems to load fairly quickly. So it's been really nice to have as far as that goes. Although I really don't notice a difference between the series six and seven with loading speeds or anything like that. It has been pretty solid though, as far as the overall stability of the software. Typically watch OS has been fairly stable and you can see it's just nice and fluid and fast. So no complaints there as far as that goes. However, one thing I've mentioned in the past is if you're wearing a band like this, so the stainless steel band, if it's not tight enough and maybe you're trying to monitor your blood oxygen level or ECG, you're trying that out. Typically it needs to be fairly tight to do that. Maybe if you're working out and monitoring that it can be a little bit hit or miss sometimes if you're trying to monitor that if you don't have a watch band that's tight enough. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Maybe you're working out and you want it to give you information about that. I would recommend instead of maybe this sort of watch band, maybe a watch band such as the solo loops, so you may want something that's a little more elastic that holds the watch closer to your wrist. If you're working out, taking a walk or anything like that, it's also lighter. And then of course it breathes a little bit better sometimes if you're maybe working out hard, or you could go for the one with the little holes in it or any of those, they seem to work a little bit better with different sensors. So that's just something to note. And I've noticed the same sort of behavior with this watch as well. Now we did have some odd charging issues with this. We have faster charging with this watch. However, I don't really pay attention to that too much because I just put it on the charger at night. When I go to bed, I'll take it off my wrist, put it on the charger next to my phone, and then I go to bed and it charges. So I haven't really noticed a speed difference, but I have noticed some odd charging behaviors depending on what version of watch OS is on it. So sometimes it just wouldn't charge all the way. Apple, fix that with different updates and things like that. But it's just something that was not really problematic in the past, but was with this watch. Hopefully they get it fixed. If you're still experiencing those issues, I know some are on the latest watch OS update and it seems to be a problem for some people. Now, as far as overall battery life, battery life has been pretty good. So if we go into battery, give it a second to load, you'll see I'm at 96%, 96% battery after about an hour or so. And I've had the display on while recording this video and that uses power as well. And so if we go into battery health, like I said, I charge this every night and for six months, I'll just put it on the charger at night, go to bed, take it off in the morning. And I'm still at 100%. Usually after a year or so I'll be down into the lower nineties or so it's very normal. It's within spec 80% after two years is normal, but so far it's holding up well and maybe a little bit better than the series six was at this time last year also. So no complaints there. Battery life gets me through a day without a problem. Now, if you're going to be streaming music on this with AirPods, that's going to take more power. Also, if you're working out a lot, that's going to use the sensors, which in turn uses more power. So it may not get you through a day. If you're doing that, you can always just turn off the always on display to save some power there. Also, if you want to do that, maybe if you're working out heavily and you're just using this all the time with its sensors. Now, this is also the cellular model of the watch, and I do have that activated. You can see that here with the little cellular option and you'll see it's on T-Mobile. It's worked fine. Typically, if I go for a watch, I'll leave the phone at home, go for a walk with the watch, and I can still get messages if there's someone trying to contact me with an important message. So it's always great to have that option. It seems to work well. I haven't had any issues with it and it just seems to work. I can stream music off it if I want to, or listen to a podcast and I have no issues with cellular connectivity. So I really haven't found that I need 5g on the watch or anything like that. 
it just works well and I don't think about it. Now, often I get asked, can I swim with my Apple Watch? Can I get it wet? And Apple actually certifies this as swim proof with WR50 water resistance. It's also IP6X certified. So that means it's more dust resistant, water resistant, and people wear these all day and all night to monitor sleep or maybe shower with them and swim with them. There's no issues with that whatsoever. I've had zero issues getting these wet. And as long as it's not a super hot, shower and maybe it loosens the adhesive. I've heard of no issues whatsoever. If you're swimming or even diving, not to super deep depths, it seems to hold up well. So Apple certified it and it's waterproof. And if it leaks, typically you can bring it to an Apple store and they'll help you out with that. So I haven't experienced that in all the years I've had Apple watches, but this one's holding up really, really well, especially since the latest version is even more durable this time around. Now, as far as Apple watch bands, I typically recommend either the solo loop or the nylon woven band. I find both of these to be very comfortable and the nylon woven band is more expensive, but is very lightweight and breathes really well. So that's one reason I typically use it. And I actually wear this a lot when I just want to maybe go for a walk. I'll switch between either one of these, just depending on which one I prefer for that time. The nylon woven one though, definitely breathes better if you're maybe working out a lot or it's just very hot all of the time. So I would recommend one of these or maybe one of the other nylon bands as well. Now, as far as who this is for, I would typically say if you have an Apple watch series five or older, the series seven is worth picking up. However, if you have a series six, I would probably hold off unless you really want the larger display. At this point, there wasn't enough giant feature changes to really justify upgrading this year for most people. So I would probably hold off as we'll see a series eight later this year, usually in September when they release the new iPhone 14. So that's typically what we'll see. And then of course this will support watch OS for years to come. So meaning watch OS nine, 10, 11, probably 12, and maybe even 13. So we'll have to wait and see what Apple actually supports, but they're still supporting the series three Apple watch and watch OS nine may support it as well. We'll know that in June at WWDC. But as far as the Apple watch is concerned, it's one of the best Apple devices that you don't really have to think about. It's been very stable and just works well and is a nice utility device also that tells time. So that's something that I recommend for a lot of people that are looking for a, a simple communication device with apps and things. And of course, workout features as well. Now, if you have any other questions you wanted to know about the series seven Apple watch, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.